I believe it's working. Right. Hello. I believe this is all working fine. I believe the mic's actually being picked up now. Hello, welcome to episode number 134 of the TW2020 Challenge Run. This is going to be Smackdown for week two of May 2021. And the road to Money in the Bank is going to continue. We're going to find out the final two women and one man from the Smackdown side to end of the two Money in the Bank ladder matches. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the show. Show opens up with Samoa Joe in the ring, and he's calling out Karrion Cross. He's saying, last week, Cross, you said name the time and the place. While I'm here right now, I've got the time, I've got the place, so get your ass out here and sign this contract. And Karrion Cross comes out, and Joe says, that contract is for a WWE Championship match between Karrion Cross and Samoa Joe at Money in the Bank on week four, Sunday, May, whatever the actual date is in the world. All you need to do is sign it, Cross, unless you're a coward. And Cross, of course, he's a big hard boy. He doesn't want to be seen as a coward, so he signs the contract and they have a tense stare down. Just a nice, simple two men fighting. The storyline really is having to change on a whim because of Randy Orton's injury. So, yeah, but I think with Joe and Cross, it's pretty simple. It can just be these are two, look at these two big, hard, beefy boys. Let's see them smash together. It's fine. The long anticipated women's tag title number one contenders match happens and it is the mean girls pick up the win over the ninja warriors carmella pins caden with a super kick 36 for danny jordan 50 for carmella 48 for casey catanzaro and a 35 for caden carter and then after the match the champs are here and they just wander out and get in the face of the challengers reggie's there offering them champagne or whatever and they're like no nah, we don't want that or they would take it and they'd throw it in his face or something and then Carmella and Danny would try and swing at the champs. They duck, and the champions AJ and Page would send them packing over the top rope. And then next week, that title match on SmackDown will be the Mean Girls versus Page and AJ for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Sasha Banks, another boss segment for her and her girls, because last week things didn't go as planned for Indy and Mickey James. So Carmella, not Carmella, <laughs> Sasha Banks has brought in a proper true historically accurate tried and true amazing statistician to the boss stable that being dana brooke of course from when she was in titles worldwide and she's going to go over how her addition to the group is going to make boss the most unstoppable force here on smackdown that's going to start when she beats dana brooke later on tonight so basically i had to, i wanted to add dana because now we've basically got a female version of evolution we've got the star leader Sasha in the Triple H role Mickey James is in the Ric Flair role Indy's in the Randy Orton role and then Dana Brooke is in the Batista role so Boss is now like a mini evolution for women strong they've got a proper statistician on their side who can actually calculate victories instead of Indy Hartwell who keeps messing up and later on tonight it will be Dana Brooke versus Bianca Belair 72 the Usos defeat Aussie Might double super kick Jimmy Uso pin Shane Fawn 75 for Jimmy, 70 for Jay, 61 for Shane, and 44 for Brendan Think. After the match, the Jacob Fatu gets into the ring. He just continues to beat up the two Aussie boys. And the Usos grab a microphone. They say, last week, Us, our big Us, cuz, Jacob Fatu, we beat your son, Dominic. And we get to choose our stipulation for money in the bank now. Us, one last time. The Mysterios and the Usos. I know you're scared because you think we're going to pick some sort of stipulation where our big cuz can get involved and cost you the titles, but we're better than that, Oos. We need to prove that we don't need our big cuz by our side. And we can win just us two versus you two. So what do you say about it, Mysterios? Uso versus Mysterios one final time at Money in the Bank inside a steel cage. And of course, Mysterios would accept. 
because they're baby faces. They don't back down from a challenge. Bivens Enterprises are moaning backstage about how it was bullshit what Pierce did to them last week, making them wrestle in the Fatal Four Way. It should have been AJ Styles versus Chad Gable. Or, rather, Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn again. Should have been Chad Gable versus Cesaro again, and they should both be mining the bank right now. But instead, neither of them are because Pierce he still holds this grudge against Bivens from that time he was the assistant GM. And if there's no opportunities going, and then he looks at Dakota, he says, "We have to make some, right, Dakota?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm down." Okay, so Bivens, Bivens Enterprises have something up their sleeve. Dakota obviously has no opportunities yet. She can try and make her own. What does that mean? And of course, AJ and Chad Gable missed out money in the bank. Corbin, he's just there. Tucker and Omos, the muscles. 79, Shinsuke Nakamura defeats Drew Gulak with a Kinshasa. 7 minutes and 56 seconds. 77 for Nakamura and a 66 for Gulak. Then the message pop up on the Titantron, and Ali's like, congrats, Shinsuke. Like I was saying at Judgment Day before I was so rudely interrupted. You're welcome. Because I'm here to save you because you're holding that United States Championship. And if I know one thing about the United States of America, it's that they don't like seeing somebody who looks like you hold that title. They don't like seeing somebody who looks like me hold that title, despite me being an American citizen and having the name Mustafa Ali. They they hold it against me and they think I'm not a real American, but I'm more American than you. And I challenge you to a match at Money in the Bank for that championship. And the, when I win, the title will be on a true American hero. His name, Mustafa Ali. He's in his office, sort of scra scrambling about after that last segment. He's obviously trying to get things sorted out when he hears a knock at the door and then walks running Gargano and Razor. He's like, Pierce, this is this is unacceptable. Pierce's like, what? What now? What have I done wrong now, Johnny? He said, I know, I know last week I beat Ray and I got in my money in the bank, but you're making Candice wrestle to get in? Candice should just be get, in, get put in. Her and Ruby won a judgment day. Yet you're still going to reward Shotzi and Ember the chance to get in money in the bank? What is this? Why are we rewarding losers over here? He's like, you know, Johnny, this is how it works. Um, Ruby and Candice, they won that one match, but I'm not going to hold that against Ruby and Chotzi for, for Ember and Chotzi forever. They deserve the opportunity to get their wins back. And I don't quite like her attitude, you wandering in here. So how about next week you go one-on-one -on -one with the other man who's qualified for Money in the Bank, Cesaro. And Johnny's like, what? What are you doing, Pierce? This is unacceptable. And Pierce's like, you know, if you're, if you're as good as you say you are, Johnny Wrestling, you'll be able to win that. Now, jog along, I've got more important things to care for. Dana Brooke and <laughs> Bianca Belair get a 45. Dana beat... Oh, Dana doesn't win. Bianca beats Dana in 4.59 with a KOD. Five minutes, lack of psychology, apparently. 71 for Bianca, 36 for Dana Brooke. No storyline attachment, that's why it's so bad. Blair. After the match, Dakota was celebrating... Not Dakota, fuck. Bianca was celebrating on the ramp. She gets to the top of the ramp, she starts swinging her hair out of her title. And then when she goes to turn around to leave um, to the backstage, Dakota flies out and she just nails over Big Boo and knocks her out. Like she did to Io Shirai on NXT in real life that one time. And then she picks up the SmackDown Women's title and she sort of smiles and holds up in the air. Bivens gasses his best friend up. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's it, Dakota, you're going to be that. You're going to win that championship. You make the opportunity for yourself, Queen. Stuff like that. So Dakota's made her intentions very clear. 80. Dijakovic and Dolph Ziggler in a Money in the Bank qualifier. Dijakovic defeats Dolph Ziggler in 11.27 with the Feast Your Eyes. 69 for Dijakovic, 30, 73 for Dolph Ziggler. They've got great chemistry. And an 80 rated match is not what I expected from this. But the men's field for Money in the Bank is now finalised. It will be from Raw, Apollo Crews, Only Lorcan, and and Ricochet. <laughs> and then from the SmackDown side, it'll be Johnny Gargano, Cesaro, and now Dijakovic. Just a Street Profits promo, them being themselves, hamming it up backstage. How they still want the smoke, and they're still going to come for those tag team titles. Just remind the world that they're still here. Just had a nice little five minutes to fill, so I gave these two mic time. Just to get them on the show.
Not really anything important said, just the Street Profits gassing themselves up. 64, Shotzi Black Heart and Ruby Riot for Money in the Bank qualifier. Shotzi beats Ruby in 10.25 of a Fright Night to qualify for Money in the Bank. Ruby damaged her neck apparently, which is bare. 59 for Shotzi, 66 for Ruby. So Shotzi Blackheart will join Sonya Deville from the SmackDown side for the women, as well as Maki, Asuka, and Tony Storm for the Raw side women. There's still one spot available in the main event, Candice LeRae and Ember Moon. But before we get there, there's going to be some fighting. The, the two heels jump Shotzi, Ember comes out to make the save for attacking Pana, and then they attack her as well. So Ember not starting this match 100%, and then that leads to <laughs> Talking Smack. And we advertise that we will hear from Sonya Deville, Drew Gulak, and SmackDown General Manager Adam Pearce has an announcement he wants to make on Talking Smack. 76 main event, bleh. Could be better, but it's fine, I trusted the women. Shook Candice wins with a heartbreaker in 1222 because Ember was attacked and wasn't 100%. 72 for Candice, 65 for Ember Moon. So Candice will join Shotzi Blackheart. And this woman on the SmackDown side. Candice and Shotzi getting each other's face. When Sonya Deville just comes up from the back and she takes Shotzi down with like a chop block from behind. And then Candice is clapping along going, yeah, you go girl, you go girl. But of course Sonya would drop Candice as well, standing tall as the show goes off the air. 65 promo for Drew Gulak on Talking Smack, just talking about how for months he's been the... Seen as like a stepping stone here on SmackDown. And that's not going to that's going to change soon because... Drew Gulak, he's still that master technician, that master wrestling machine, and he needs to just find his edge again, and st he'll stop being the stepping stone for SmackDown, and he's going to come, and he's got his eyes on that United States Championship. Sonya Deville, 79, just chatting about how she just beat up Candice and Shotzi, so she's clearly the favourite to win Money in the Bank. She's beaten everyone. I believe she's beaten Asuka as well on the Raw side. Adam Pearce makes his announcement. He says that earlier on tonight, the message hacked into the show, and Masaf Ali appeared to challenge Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States Championship. And that is a match that I would quite like to sign off on, but I'm not stupid. Masaf Ali is not contracted here to SmackDown. Why would I give him a championship opportunity if he's not a SmackDown superstar? So if Ali, uh, for once, for once in your life, I have the power. Either you sign a contract to become an official SmackDown superstar and you can end this whole taking over the show, ambushing, free agent thing, or you don't get a championship match. Simple as that. Then Ali would quickly cut in. He buys himself in. I think would be a funny image is like, I have like the LED table on Talking Smack. Like, because he, he hacked in. He like, so his face is all over all the screens, including like the LED table. <laughs> and then he's like, Pierce, this is bullshit. Um, your champion, Shinsuke Nakamura, accepted my challenge, so how are you to deny your champion the right, the championship match that he wants to see? This is just terrible general managing from you, Adam. And Pierce is like, hey, I, I understand, I'll talk to Shinsuke about it, but I said what I said, if you want that championship opportunity, you've got to sign yourself a SmackDown contract, and I'll have one for you here next week. Balls in your court, Mustafa. If you want that title match, you'll be here in person next week. And you'll sign that SmackDown contract and you'll end this whole message charade once and for all. And Ali's like, well, that's not going to happen even if I do become a SmackDown superstar, which God knows I don't want to do. I'm still going to be delivering the message because my message hasn't been delivered yet. And it will continue to be delivered until I am the United States Champion and that will be the first step in my delivery. So, you know, Pierce, you drive a hard bargain, but we'll see you next, we'll see you next week. Show gets a 79, that's actually pretty good considering we had the women in the main event. Bob Matt's more than the 79 is what you thought of the show. Do let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll see you next time for Raw. See you then.